what I want is uh, parents to be aware because, for example, early this year in January, there is a child who committed suicide. I think for me, my experience is that it's really sad what is happening. And especially for those not that share uh, thoughts of suicidal thoughts, what is surprising is that there are many boys. Uh, when I work with girls, they, are not, they don't have many. Of course, girls have their own issues. Mm -hmm. But what is surprising is most issues with suicides or I have suicidal thoughts or I'm depressed. They are mainly boys. Mujewale, Mujewale, Mujewale. My name is Bane Kibuka and welcome to another episode of the Ugandan Gold Talk Show. I'm glad finally I got you. Um, so how are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. How are you? Well done. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm how you're doing. But I'm... <laughs> well yeah. done. Thank you very much. And I, the same thing I would say to you, like, well done. I've been following you ever since I got to know you. I've been following you, what you do. And I was just proud and every time i'll be like wow and i remember one time i sent you a text on whatsapp I was like that's really cool reading some of the things you do uh but before we go into studying all that i want to welcome you to my podcast uh, the thank ugandan you. boy talk show um thank you so I, much thank you for having me yeah i say this podcast to just share stories and for people to hear what other people do i started by sharing my own story what I've been able to do, but learning what other people do, like what you do uh, pushes me to, I want more people to hear what you do and the work you do. And those who don't have the ability to come and see you personally, at least they can get to hear of the works you do through this podcast. So I'm glad to have you here today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we have started this uh, podcast, but I've not told my listeners your name. Uh, do you mind telling us your name, who you are? And yeah, we can start from there. <laughs> my name is Coach Noro Naliombia, and um, I'm a life coach. Uh, I mainly focus on teenagers to help them deal with teenage challenges and make the right choices. I'm also an author of two books, The Teen Go Girl and The Teen Go Boy Book. I don't have copies here to show you. Let me see. I don't have copies with I'll, me. I'll right put some in the, in the video for people to see. I have some yeah. pictures of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I do, basically. That's what I do. That's really cool. And um, so I'll tell you how you ended up on my podcast. You might be wondering, like, how did this guy get me here? Like, uh, but I hosted Tracy uh, on my podcast to talk about finances. So I usually bring people to talk about different topics of life uh, for others to listen and to inspire other kids. I'm from Uganda. I grew up in Uganda, even though I don't live in Uganda right now. But I know there's a lot of my friends, the kids who are growing, who don't have access to this information. So I ask people, like, who would you like to have me to host on my podcast next? And somebody recommended you because of the work you do and oh. that's that's how I got connected to you and uh, just being a life coach that's that's inspiring like I'm, I was going to talk about it later on but that is something I never got a chance to to have when I was growing up but seeing like the kids these days are able to have people like you um that's 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 really inspiring so what is your background like like your education family you know can you share with us a little <laughs> bit about that wow that's a long story but um, my story or my education which one just tell us a, a little bit about education and then a little bit about your family like your siblings and where you grew up mm, okay so so I grew up in Bukoto, uh, but uh, we used to stay in Maraba. Okay. So then we shifted to Bukoto. Um, uh, your listeners may not know these places. 
It's funny. It's funny yeah, because you, you mentioned Bukoto. Do you know Semogere Zone? Semogere in, Zone? Yeah, in Bukoto. So it's by, mm-hmm. uh, I think, where Sudil, where Sudil has built, built that school somewhere in that area where there's that school. I used to live in Bukoto, but it's, I don't even know how to mm-hmm. direct it. But it was okay, next so to that the camp of mm-hmm. Mm, the place we used to stay in was called in Simbi's Wome, Bukoto. Okay. So anyway, from Maraba, we shifted to Bukoto, but our dad used to stay in Bukoto. I mean, in, in Maraba, because that's where he used to work. Then he bought uh, a house in Bukoto, so we started staying in Bukoto. So our early years, uh, he didn't spend a lot of time with us because he was working from far. So it was, he would come home once in a week, or, or after two weeks or after a month, depending on how busy he was. So, so we used to stay in Bukoto mainly with our mom. And why I share this is because we built a relationship mainly with our mom than our father. So when I was about 13 years, um, they kind of divorced. Uh, our mom left home. So remember, our dad used to work in Maraba. So being the firstborn, I'm the firstborn. When you ask mm. about siblings, I'm the firstborn. Yeah. I have a brother and a sister. So, so when mom left, I basically became the mom, like trying to guide my siblings and all that. Uh, but why I share that is because when she left, uh, you know, sometimes parents, when they fight, they kind of use their kids to punish mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. So my dad was like, you will not see your mom, you will not talk to her, you will not hear from her. So for two years, we didn't hear from our mother. And it was very, very traumatizing. Because remember, I told you, like, we didn't really grow up with our dad. He just used to yeah. come home once in a while. So the relationship that we had was with our mother. And that really traumatized us a lot because we're more connected, more connected to our mother. So in fact, it's one of the reasons that I'm passionate about teenagers because mm-hmm. that time we were teenagers, our mother had left and we didn't really have proper guidance as teenagers. Remember we were hurt, we were traumatized because yeah. of our mom leaving. So anyway, later our dad, um, he's fine. he became a bit broke. So, and he couldn't take care of us properly. So he allowed us now to see our mother. So we stayed with our mother for a while while she was taking care of us in terms of meal, food and, and education. So we stayed with her for about two years and she fell sick and she passed away. So my mom passed away when I was in form six in S six. So anyway, that's like briefly my yeah. background and my story, and that is why I'm I'm passionate about yeah. just because um because there was a gap. Uh, we didn't mm-hmm. feel like we were guided. Uh, parents were going through their own challenges, and somehow they forgot to to guide us. So we made uh, a few mistakes here and there, and we were stressed and depressed. So anyway, that is why I'm passionate about yeah. uh, this. Mm-hmm. Uh, about my education, my education is interesting because <laughs> <laughs> I studied procurement at okay. university. I studied procurement and why I studied procurement, I think at that time I didn't know what I really wanted. I didn't know mm-hmm. what I was passionate about. So at that time, procurement had just come in. It was like the new course, the in course. So someone told me to do procurement. So I did procurement for three years, but I've never practiced as yeah. a as a procurement officer, I've never done that. In fact, I've never been interested. So <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could give my degree to yeah. someone and they give me some money. For <laughs> 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 three years, I spent at that university studying something I've never done. So anyway, so yeah, of course, after university, I managed to get a job. And then I got a job at Macquarie University Business mm-hmm. School. Mm-hmm. So one day we were in a conference. 
and there was this motivational speaker who was inspiring us. So until that time, I didn't know anything about motivational speaking and all mm -hmm. that. So, but this motivational speaker was inspiring us. So in a mo in that moment, I said, whatever this guy is doing is what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's what I want to do. So of course, after the conference, I went, I talked to him. He told me what it was. That's how I started knowing about motivational speaking, about coaching. Later, I went and I did a course in coaching. I became a certified coach. So since then, I've been doing work with teenagers and also people who want um, coaching. So who want yeah. to basically turn around their lives and basically live a, a life they, they, they dream about. So yeah. So really, that is my my education. Of course, I also have uh, an MBA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's briefly about my education. Yes. That's really interesting, and I like I like how you expanded it to actually explain to us how you you got where you were and the steps is sharing your story from your parents, your mother, and what they went through. It's really touching because I know there's a lot of other kids in Uganda who are going through the same story like you went through. And to see how you use that outcome now that you're in mm -hmm. position to share your own experience with these other kids. And that's the main reason why I wanted to bring you on here, my podcast to, to share about that. And I actually had that question on here that what made you want to, to help the teens, but I guess I'm not going to ask it because Everybody now knows, even our listeners have heard from your personal story. And now you are number one coach of teenagers in, in Africa. And congratulations on that. Uh, I've been keeping up with you and you going to the I, 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 named, I named myself that. That's that's good. Like that's actually because that, that means you're your number one fan, you know, like you, like yeah. you know, like when you when you name yourself by the number one uh coach for teenagers in Africa that that's you know you do your job very well that you believe in yourself in what you do and mm -hmm. you mentioned about the book uh, a little bit uh, how to deal with teenage challenges and make right choices what inspired you to write this mm -hmm. book mm -hmm. so again um, what inspired me to write the books is actually it's been a journey, really. It's been a journey from my story to then starting to work with teenagers. So as I work with teenagers, for example, uh, okay, so what inspired me to work with teenagers was first my story, what I went through. But also as I worked with them in schools, when I went to schools to talk to them, I realized that in schools, I'm only given like two hours, really mm -hmm. max, to talk yeah. to them. So in two hours, how much, how much can you tell a child, a teenager? Because they experience lots of things from body image, from their bodies changing, to peer pressure, to social media, to stress, to teen crushes. So all those things. So I felt that, so when I used to go to schools, I felt I was not creating the impact I really wanted to, because mm -hmm. I usually had two hours. So I always wanted to leave them with something more. So I remember I went to a restock to look for a book that I could recommend to them. So I didn't start out with wanting to write a book. So I said, okay, let me go to a restock, look for a book for teenagers and recommend this book to these teenagers. But then when I went to a restock, yes, there were some books for teenagers, but I must say maybe <laughs> some of the things were quite different from what I wanted to pass on to these teenagers. Right. Yeah. So I decided, you know, let me start writing a book for teenagers. But of course, I had written a book before, so I knew how to write and all that. So I wrote a book for teenagers to cover as many topics as topics, possible yeah. that they go through. And also it's because um, parents usually don't talk to their children or even those who try to talk to them um, don't sometimes don't have that time. Or mm -hmm. if they have that time, they don't know 
basically what 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 to say or yeah. how to say it or how to start so the book is like a guide it makes the parents work easy it guides the books guide the children but they also help the parents work to be easy so if a parent gets the book for the child the child is able to read and for them as a parent they are just supposed they can just ask the questions and like so for example in chapter one what did you learn Right. Chapter two, what did you learn? Chapter three, what did you learn? Yeah. So, so that's why I wrote the book. It was a journey from my story to me talking to teenagers and then to realizing talking wasn't enough. They needed something they something can yeah. hold on to and mm-hmm. always refer back in case right. of any, any issue they have, yes. Yeah, and sometimes like when, when you come and speak, like let's say you come to our school and you speak to our school, I might just, I might listen but I'm not going to listen to everything. But when I have the book, then I have everything in there. Like if I didn't hear this part, then I have it in the book mm-hmm. that I can read it through. And I just pulled up the, the picture of your book here on my screen um, and the topics you were talking about. There's a lot of topics like body, body challenge, mm-hmm. body changes, body image, hygiene. And these are some of the things we struggled with. In, I struggled with in school. And like mm-hmm. I said in the beginning, like I never had, anyone like you to share these but i'm glad that the teenagers these days are able to access things like this like friends and peer pressure and you know like when you have friends at school they can pressure into something that you don't want to do but like because that's the environment you're in um so yeah i see there's a boy uh the ones for the boy and for the girls and some of these topics are kind of similar there's a little bit differences from like being a boy and a girl but I also noticed that yeah, the book. So, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the topics, uh, most of them are are similar, mm-hmm. basically for topics that apply to both boys and girls. Right. But the difference comes in in topics that mainly apply to to the boys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on the on the book itself, I I saw that it's approved by NCDC. What's what's National Curriculum Development Center. Mm. Is that so so, mm, mm-hmm. so the reason I took it to National Curriculum Development Center is really so uh, National Curriculum Development Center basically is the one that um, develops curriculums for students at primary and secondary school. So it being reviewed is to say that first of all, there is no content that is misleading to the children. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they also advise you on how to improve the book to suit the teenagers right. or to suit their minds as children. So, for example, when I took the book to National Curriculum Development Center, it didn't have pictures. It didn't have illustrations. So there were only ones. Mm-hmm. So I was advised to put in pictures, to put in uh, illustrations. Because a young mind learns more with illustrations. Yeah, that's definitely so national right. Curriculum, yeah, so National Curriculum Development Center is like, um, like what is is this called? NBA, yeah? N- yeah, NBC, no. the one for the A- products. UNBS. UNBS, UNBS, yeah, UNBS. yeah, yeah. So basically, it's a standard. So I did have to, I didn't have to check them there, but just as to to give confidence to parents mm. yeah. that there is a third party that has reviewed the book and confirmed that there is no misleading content. Because as a parent, you don't want to just buy a book yeah. off the street for your child. Mm-hmm. So you need to be careful the content you're sharing with your child. But yet as a parent, you may not have the time to review the whole book Mm-hmm. and make sure that the content is appropriate for your child. So NCDC did that. It approved and it reviewed the book and made sure that um, the content is appropriate for, for the children. Uh, however, so so far it's the girl's book that has been approved. Yeah. So the boy's book is, uh, is still under review. Okay. It's still under review. So very soon the certificate for the boys will be out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, people who will see this, you can tell from the, I'll put this picture 
in this video so you can see and there's a price for the book for those of you who are in uganda and there's free delivery in and around kampala and there's also a phone number under that that you'll be able to so if you were there and you need uh your child to read this book i know i have a lot of listeners in uganda the united states and all over the world but if you're in uganda and you want access to this book and if you're in the u.s but you know somebody in uganda they can help you get this book. Um, so I want to congratulate you on that and like doing that, writing the book. And this is some, this is a tool to like help the, the kids growing up. And I'm, I'm excited. If I go to Uganda, I might get one for my child in the future. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I said, I follow you on social media. And one day I read a quote that you wrote and it says, I'm on a mission to help at least 1 million teenagers to deal with teenage challenges and make the right choices. What, what persuaded you to write that? Like what made you want to go on the mission to help at least 1 million teenagers? <laughs> it's um, an ambitious target. Yeah. So it will push me. Mm -hmm to think of different ways to help these teenagers. So like I, I said, one of the things that I, I, might, I did was write the book because I realized I'm just one person mm -hmm. and I cannot be in the same place at the same time. So yes, I can go to the schools and talk to the kids, but I can only be in one school at a particular time. That's true. But the books, the books can reach millions of kids. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's one way I, I, I want to accomplish that target. But also um, sharing with the parents uh, challenges that their kids are going through because most parents actually don't know what uh, these kids are going through. They have no idea. That's, that's, that's true. And, and in fact, in fact, I also get shocked on a daily when I interact with these kids because honestly, the things that are happening to them are, are shocking and very, very saddening. So one of the things I want to do is create awareness for parents to know what the challenges their kids are going through so that they can help them, so that they can support them. Because usually parents assume that somehow, for as long as the child goes to school, they will figure out things mm -hmm. on their own. But I'm finding out that what they are figuring out on their own is really sad. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's my target, my ambitious target. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you're talking about this, and I'm glad you, you did this, because to me, I look at it as like, I mean, I later on figured out in a different way, but not every kid is going to be able to figure it out. Some of the kids will just end up going the, the opposite direction about some of these topics. And like you just said, like growing up, our parents were even shy to talk about sex. Like you can't, they can't talk to their kids about like sex, sex education. And they are shy about talking to kids about their body parts. So you grew up in that environment where your parents can sit you down to talk about these challenges. And it's really sad and sad that like nobody, unless people like you, like come up to, to help uh, these kids. Um, also, there's another quote. I know you've posted a lot of quotes that speak out to me, and I want you to, to talk about it. Uh, you, there's another quote that says, I don't care what you have done or where you've come from and how you look at your level of achievement. We're all worthy human beings, and we all deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. When I read that, it spoke out to me as a person. Like, I know I'm... I'm, I don't think I'm a, no, I'm not a teenager. <laughs> I'm getting old. But that right there, it speaks out to me to like a young bunny who was in Uganda, like just, I don't care what you have done or what you have achieved or where you even come from. Like we are all worthy and we deserve uh, respect. What made you think about something like that? So one is because as a society, Society kind of tends to 
make you feel like if you've not achieved, if you come from a certain background, especially from poor backgrounds, or if you look a certain way, or if you have your the skin of the color of your skin is a certain way, that you they, they tend to make you feel that you're less than mm-hmm. in a certain way in some in some places. Of course, not all, but sometimes unconsciously we tend to make people feel that less than. And even if other people don't make you feel less than, sometimes you make yourself feel less than. So, but I believe that we are all worthy. Uh, I remember one day when I was uh, not so young, I remember I was working with a friend of mine and then we found like an adult. So the adult was asking us questions, what's your name, who's your father? So I mentioned my father's name and then my friend mentioned his father's name. And his father's name was like a successful person, renowned person, rich person. And I still remember to that day that the attention shifted from me to her. So now all the attention went to her. Okay, tell me more, what, what? So it felt that because I'm, because my father is not known or because he's not well off, it means that I want to get the attention. So... So that is what I I, I recognize, like, and it's one of the things I share with kids in schools, that they need to know that they are worthy. It doesn't matter because some of them write notes. Maybe I feel feel bad when my father comes on a border border or my mother comes on a border border or they say um, sometimes their friends segregate them because they come from poor families. So these things are real. So yeah. I tell them that it doesn't matter where you're coming from, or they tell them maybe because I'm fat, my friends laugh at me. So it doesn't matter where you come from, your body, how your body looks. Like we are all worthy. Mm-hmm. So, so we should always remember that and also be able to even not put ourselves down because sometimes before even someone else puts you down, you already you've already put yourself, yourself down. down. You know that. Yeah. Unconsciously, yeah. so so even yourself, mm-hmm. don't put yourself down. Don't say, "Oh no, Ru, because I come from a poor family, or because I suffered when I was young." No, that doesn't make me uh, less than. That doesn't make me less than. So I have to move with my head up high, with confidence, loving myself, and just focusing on making. <laughs> Making yeah. a difference, really. Yeah. That, so. that 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 right there, what you just explained, that's like that's something I want also to tell other people. That's some I want to remind the kids growing up, like these things, the outside, like the successfulness doesn't define who you are. And you just touched on it a little bit. When I was going in school, I think I was in P6, um, we were poor. My mom literally brought my suitcase on her head when I was going to boarding school, like she was carrying it on her head and like other kids, their parents would bring like cars. We didn't have a car. So my mom literally just carried her, my suitcase on her head and all the kids were looking through the window. Hey, look, I'm Bonnie's mom. He's carrying the suitcase on her head. And it was just, and even like a, a VD, visitation day, like I, my parents were not that rich. Like they would not bring a lot of gifts, a lot of like, snacks and food like other parents did but that's that speaks a lot to me and when you share that to remind those kids like because mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that that right there didn't define who i am today like today i'm a totally mm-hmm. different person like today i have mm-hmm. my own car today i have my own house i can drive wherever i go but at that time mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't have that so if mm-hmm. i i i defined myself in that like oh we're gonna always be poor we never like you know it it changes so i'm glad that you remind these kids about that and speaking about the notes i know you've mentioned because that was my next thing i was going to talk about you go to school and the kids write notes about their experiences and i read some of the notes that you you i don't know if this i'm allowed to to talk about because kids no i don't know but i'm not gonna say any names but like what the kids wrote but down. They, they don't have names. 
they don't have any names yeah they don't have any names actually but like looking at what the kids wrote down you know like touched my heart the things that they go through and i remember when i was in school some people would come and make us write things from like on the paper for your heart like reading kids write about depression reading uh kids write about anxiety kids write about what mm-hmm. what is what is your experience with those what have you experienced reading what these kids go through in school no for me my experience has been been really discovering what is really happening and being um and not trying to cover up what is happening because what i want is uh, parents to be aware because for example early this year in january there is a child who committed suicide suicide so probably if this their parents were I mean, like, I think for me, my experience is that it's really sad what is happening. And especially for those notes that share uh, thoughts of suicidal thoughts, what is surprising is that they're mainly boys. They're mainly boys. Uh, when I work with girls, they, are not, they don't have many, of course, girls have their own issues. Mm-hmm. But what is surprising is most issues with suicides or I have suicidal thoughts or I'm depressed. What is interesting is that they are mainly boys. And maybe it's because of society focusing mainly on the girls and also yeah. the fact that the fact that um, usually, for example, if a parent has a girl and a boy, they are going to pay more attention to the girl. To the girl, yeah. In fact, some of the boys sometimes say, maybe my dad loves the girl most, mm-hmm. my sister most. So you see that the girl is given more attention and the boy is neglected somehow. And yeah. also society teaches us that boys have to be strong. So, so if they can't share what they're going through with anyone, they're going to be depressed. They're going to feel like they're not worthy. They're going to start feeling having those suicidal thoughts because they feel, okay, maybe I'm not man enough if, I, I, if I'm dealing with this situation. So anyway, uh, back to your question, my experience is kids are going through a lot. Yeah. So parents, we should stop the denial because I think what I'm seeing is most parents are in denial. Uh, let's stop that denial and have these conversations with our children. Mm-hmm. If you can't have that conversation, find someone, find someone who's a professional to talk to your child, but these kids need someone to talk to them. I think that, that is, is what I should say about that, yeah. Yeah, that, that is really good, and it's actually mind-opening, like when you shared about it. And at some point, I thought I was going to ask you about that. It's like, what do you think between the girls and boys? But now you've explained it, and it sort of like makes sense to, to me who grew up in Uganda. Like you see, most people, most parents would be more worried. Oh, I don't want my daughter to get pregnant. I don't want my daughter to do this. Mm-hmm. So they tend to forget about what's going to happen with the boys. And you sharing mm-hmm. that like speaks a lot of volumes. And actually, on that note that you sent the parents there's a message you wrote to the dear parents. This is what I mean when I say our children are not mentally and emotionally okay. I work with teenagers and most of them are depressed. Depression and anxiety are real and mental issues always find professional. Uh, no, yeah. You said anxiety and mental issues are real. Always find professional help before it's too late. And that was a message that you, you wrote out somewhere to the parents. And you've, you've touched on this a lot, that the parents don't know or the parents who look at different places and forget other, like they'll look at the girls and forget the boys, things like that. And I'm glad that you shared that for the parents to, to remember, to know that the boys are also like, Consign like for mm. not yeah. for them to forget. so both teenagers, both the girls and the boys have challenges. So 
So boys shouldn't be neglected, but also mm-hmm. girls, of course, have challenges. I'm yeah. not saying now that <laughs> I'm not saying that they should shift their focus. I'm just yeah. saying that the boys should not be neglected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Now, then also w- something mm-hmm. I'm noticing. So something yeah. I'm noticing is also a lot of pornography. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of pornography addiction, and it's also mainly with the boys, really. Um, I have, I think I've so far experienced maybe one or two cases with the girls, but mainly the boys. So, okay. so parents should also be aware of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, all the other issues that teenagers struggle with, like also drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So with all this that you do, uh, is this something you do individually or you work with an organization or like how do you, how are you able to do what whatever you do? Are you working just as Nuru or are you working with an organization? Yeah, I have an organization, my organization. It's called Success Chapter. Uh, but uh, but <laughs> Yes, but yeah, I'm also a coach, so I also mm. do coaching as no yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I with the, yeah, with with the work you do, whatever, like writing books, traveling to go to, I'm sure it comes with costs. And like for me, what I, what what I I look at, like people who like you who give in their time to do these works, I'm sure there are people who are going to listen to my podcast, people who are going to find this somewhere. And in case somebody's touched to support the work you do or support you in any way, your organization or whatever, I'm sure they can. I mean, I'll, I'm going to put your information, like your social media information, they can get in touch with you. But I feel like okay. this is mm-hmm. this is something so that I, I feel like. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. How I work, so most schools, uh, most schools, pay for my my talks services yeah yeah and and the ones that can't afford yes i still so i have to i have pro bono work and then work that is paid for so some schools invite me to speak and it's paid for of course also the books uh bring an income so if you're asking about sustainability mm-hmm. and and also I do one-on-one coaching with mm-hmm. teenagers. So if a parent wants uh, someone to coach their child or talk to them and they are happy to pay, so those ones pay. So I do two things, yeah. That, that is good. Yeah, I'm glad. And like, I think it's beneficial. And I think most parents would consider, should consider that like having somebody, it's like, kind of like therapy like go talk to somebody to talk to you about what you're going through and if the parents are scared to talk to their kids about the things that you do that's another option like send them to somebody who is not scared to talk about these issues and i really yeah. appreciate like that. to guide the children to guide the yeah. children because uh, because you don't want your child to make mm-hmm. silly mistakes that may really impact them yeah. for the rest of their lives so if they have the information, if they can make the right decision, that's what every parent would want. And I know you mentioned in the beginning, it's not only about the teenagers, like even the adults, like we, like adults, we go through some, some things where you need yeah. to go talk to a therapist, where you need to go talk to a counselor, you know, like there's some, me, myself, like I think I had to go for, for counseling to somebody because of the things I was going through and just somebody to guide you like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. So even to the adults who are listening today, like, hey, don't don't neglect what you're feeling, what you're going through. Just think about getting a professional uh, assistance or help before it's too late. Um, so are you, I forgot to greet you in, uh, you're Muslim, right? I forgot to say, yes. Aslam Alaikum. <laughs> I forgot to say that in the beginning. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, also, Tracy uh, told me about like your passion about reminding people about God. Like, no matter your religion, like you've been um, super encouraging about people to to remember God and to walk 
with God. So that's something that was told about you. And I really appreciate that. Like, I don't really, I have a lot of friends that are Muslim. I have a lot of friends that are Christian. And for me, I just love everybody because I know we're all like praying to God. And as long as somebody knows some something, there's somebody above. So that's that's the way to go. So I like that you encourage people to remember about God. So is there anything that I've not talked about that you would like to tell my listeners uh, before we wrap up today? Um, what I want to tell them is, uh, so for the adults and even the teenagers really like believe in yourself, uh, believe in your dreams, don't be scared to pursue them because you never know whose life you're going to impact, but also your own life. Mm -hmm. uh, because for example, I remember when I used to write the books for the teenagers, of course, most people were discouraging me. Ugandans don't read, people don't read, mm -hmm. Africans don't read. But I kept writing the books and now I'm seeing that they are really creating impact. Yeah. So yeah, so whoever has a dream, like believe in your dream, like mm -hmm. pursue it, don't be afraid. If you have a job and a dream, you can still do them together, but don't give up on your dream. Believe in your dream, believe in yourself. And for the teenagers, make the right choices. Um, you still have many, many years ahead to do whatever you want to do. So for now, focus on your, your books and your future. For the parents, um, love yourselves, but also love your kids and guide them, guide them. Don't hope that somehow they will find the right answers. Mm -hmm. Like that would be like you're betting on your child's life. <laughs> yeah. So don't yeah. bet on your child's life, guide them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like sending them to a, a pitch uh, with full of holes and you don't guide them. And basically you take them when they are blindfolded. Blind so you tell them you go right through that pitch. So they may fall into the ditches. So your role is to guide them so that they don't fall through those, they don't fall into those ditches. They make the right choices, yeah. So I think one thing you I one thing you touched on that I actually wanted to talk about late, but I, I missed it was the book. So yeah, they are right that Africans don't read, but how are they gonna read when they don't even have the books? So you have to write the book and encourage them. So you're actually hitting two buds with one stone, like helping these mm -hmm. kids improve their reading, but also learning mm -hmm. from what the book has to teach them. So, like, if we keep getting that narrative of, like, oh, Ugandans don't read, then that's how we're going to be. Like, somebody has to change that narrative, like, we'll start reading. And me, we didn't read because we didn't have the books. But now if the books are there, the kids will be able to read. So I appreciate you for that. Um, one last question. What gets you? No, it's not the last one. But what gets you excited about life? What makes you happy about life? I ask everybody that question. Uh, what what makes you excited about life? About life, I think for me, about life is uh, the ability for us to create the life we want. Like mm -hmm. like all of us have that ability to create something. Like yeah. so, you can't just sit on the sidelines and watch other people create the life they want, and you feel like maybe you can't create the same. No, all of us are creators. God gave us that ability to create the life we want. Like, like it's not even dependent on your background and where you come from, on the color of your skin. Like, it's not dependent on that. It's dependent on you saying, I want to create this. And you create it. So I think um, what excites me is, <laughs> I think being able to create yeah. uh, the life you want and create the impact you want, create the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good answer. And I always tell people like there's no wrong answer with this question. It's just something <laughs> that comes from your heart and like what you feel, which that's that's the right answer. And it teaches me something like we have the ability to create and like the life we want, like you just say. And um, 
So the other the last question is, who would you like to see on my podcast? And um, you're going to help me find this person and we host him on the podcast to share about something. I host people to share about anything they want. Um, uh, the life uh, the stories, I'm sure like all the stories I do, they're going to bless somebody out there. So if there's one person you want to recommend for me to host on my podcast uh-huh. and you're going to help me, so we can contact the person. Okay. Um, um, I had not given it thought, but I'm just going to nominate someone right now of head. I want to nominate someone. She's called Coach Jennifer. Okay. Uh, her work is mainly for people above 40s. I don't know if you have those on your, on your yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, there are people who listen to above 40. Mm-hmm. But also, it's not so much above 40. I think she also talks about how you can prepare your life mm-hmm. for 40, something like that. Yeah. If not, her, hmm. or maybe we we'll go with that one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. If, if, she, if she doesn't, then we'll, we'll find out somebody else. Um, the other one could be... Have you hosted Jamila? Jamila, no, no, Jamila. Jamila Mayanja. No. So Jamila Mayanja, what she does is um, she has um, an organization for 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 young women, and uh, they 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 it's called uh, Tools for Girls, I think. Okay. okay, the organization is called Smart Girls, but what they do is Tools for Girls. So they teach girls how to do work for for men which is ideally okay not mm-hmm. work for men but ideally work for men or oh, what did i say <laughs> <laughs> work that Every, is uh, yeah, me, done mama said you, yeah 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 that, i like, got it like, mm-hmm. um, like mechanics mm-hmm. those things like changing that, that, tires and that, that would be really interesting that would be really interesting yeah. i think i think i really yeah. like the idea so it would be really okay. cool to to hear her story so yeah, if you if you can get her connected to me, I usually send out uh, like I was connected to you, and then I reach out to you, and then I ask your permission if you'd love to be on my podcast. I usually don't force people. If somebody says no, I respect it. Some people don't like like to be like I don't know, but if somebody says no, uh, no hard feelings. Mm-hmm. I, I just say yeah, I think uh, I appreciate. It. But yeah, so no, thank you very much. It was. Uh, blessed to have you on my podcast to listen to what you do and i'm i'm sure our listeners are going to be excited to hear the works you do and how you are changing lives a lot of kids and the next generation so we appreciate you and everything you do and i'm glad you were able to come to my podcast thank you thank you for having me all right uh yeah we'll keep in touch so thank you very much Hey there, I am Bonnie Kibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for watching my video and don't forget to hit subscribe and share with a friend. Tune in every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time for a new episode about my podcast. And for more information about this podcast, follow me on my Instagram page, talk underscore show underscore 256.